building in any business in the center of venture capital. I am Alex Edmonds. People on the internet call me Supreme Rum Ham, and this is the Building an Indie Business podcast, recorded in the Indie Business Studio. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about a new growth strategy for revenue research, and that is um, syndication or re publishing uh, current revenue research content on other websites. So I'm going to be talking about the benefits of that, the um, what I might gain from it, the problems with it, and what I have to do next. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so using other publications to grow revenue research. Uh, Some of the benefits are that it's free, right? Um, It doesn't cost me anything because I'm giving them content to make money from, right? Um, I might even make money because some publications will give me like a penny per view, right? So it's not a lot, but I might make some money, which is cool, right? I could put that in the revenue column for revenue research, right? Right? And then I could make it into an article and then make it into a premium uh, report. So yeah, that, that'd that be cool, right? And then also, mostly why I'm doing this though is to get more eyeballs um, on to revenue research, right? So each publication has their own their own readership, right? They have their own subscribers. So let's say I... I do an article, a blog post with um, a platform that has a hundred thousand views or a hundred thousand readers. That's a hundred thousand potential people that maybe don't know what revenue research is, but now they, there's a chance that they might read it. And even if that's one percent, right? Let's break it down. Ten thousand is one, or a hundred thousand. So a thousand is one percent. One one percent. Of the, those readers subscribe to Revenue Research, that's 10, right? And so, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so that's 10, right? And I have 15 articles, that's 150 people um, reading my stuff. Or no, that that's subscribed to my stuff that are part of the email list now. And that's just based off existing content, right? I haven't done anything new. And so... Even then, those 150 people, they might share um, it with their people or with their friends, right? So that that's exponential. And that's just one publication. What if I go to two? What if I go to three? What if I go to four, right? So it's just my stuff is growing now. And I'm getting backlinks from all of that. So as more people are seeing my stuff, um, more it's increases the chances of people finding the stuff on Google, which it just snowballs into more organic traffic and more organic traffic, right? From just being on the platform to more um, domain authority, right? Right. And then, so my post might end up going viral uh, because it's on a different platform. So when a new post on a platform gets created what the platform does is they they tweet it out and if their followers really like that um that post they'll they'll retweet it they'll like it and a lot of people will see it so yeah and then sometimes i get tagged in those posts because i i've already started this for hacker noon i'm gonna talk about that in a little bit so I get tagged in those posts and people might really like the blog post so they follow me on Twitter and that's that's someone that I don't have to follow back, right? So it just snowballs into more and more, right? And then I'm not talking about using new content, right? So I'm talking about using existing content. So it's not that much extra work. For Hacker Noon, all I do is I copy and paste my article and maybe do a little bit of formatting 
but it maybe takes 10 minutes 10 minutes for maybe 150 subscribers that's a i'd take that any day right okay and then another benefit of this is that um so if you remember from my my new year my goals episode for 2020 and 2021 one of my goals is to get 12 rejections um i have not completed that goal so far but this would help me get to that goal so yeah okay um publications help increase visibility on google yeah so um these these are publications that have uh high domain authority um they might have uh the domain authority of 30 or 40 or 50 right that's more than i have with the podcast website open podcast and revenue research together so just by having a backlink on these websites that'll help maybe both revenue research and the podcast website uh, gain domain authority and get more visible on google and get me organic traffic and that way i can just do the podcast and not have to promote any other way which would be great that's my goal for pretty much anything i do right Okay, so then I've talked about this. Uh, I've been doing this with Hacker Noon, right? And so it's not just like that Hacker Noon has the domain authority. No, it. so Hacker Noon has the domain authority, and I can piggyback off that. Um, so I have one article on Hacker Noon. It's the, the airlines article for revenue research. I put that on Hacker Noon. And if you Google how airlines make money, that article is the first thing to show up. So I'm getting views from organic traffic. Or no, I'm getting views. Yeah, getting views from organic traffic from Hacker Noon um, because they have a high domain authority, people are viewing my content. It's my most popular article on Hacker Noon. Um, 1,500 people have read it. Um, and I'm not sure if people have subscribed to my stuff because of it. Probably not. But um, my second most popular on Hacker Noon, my second most popular article, has 200 views. So um, there's something there where more people have viewed it because it's the first thing on Google, right? And then another benefit is that um, other people might syndicate um, that publication's content. So if you go look at my um, backlinks on Ahrefs, on the backlink checker, you'll see that I have backlinks from like from some random website that has... A d domain authority of 10 because I it's from my article on Hacker Noon right um, so maybe if I get on a bigger publication that that syndication website will have a domain authority of 20 or 30 and the one I'm posting on has like a domain authority of 60 you know so that's more backlinks for me you know um, yeah, and then another benefit is that I get to say I've been published in these places. So let's say I, I get one of my blog posts on the New York Times. I get to say that I've been published in the New York Times and that gives me credibility. I, I can put that on the Revenue Research website and that means more people are likely to subscribe because... They see, oh, like, this guy's a respected writer on this topic, right? And then I get to say, I, for freelance, I get to say, hey, I've been published in uh, the New York Times. Hire me because I know I have the skills of a New York Times writer, right? And I can, I can maybe get you published in the New York Times. I can show you how to do it, right? Because now I've written you New York Times quality content, so... It should be an easy step to getting published in the New York Times, right? 
that's something I could say to get more money, right? Okay. And then with all this syndication, I have to do less promoting because now, now the platform does the promoting and people see my stuff and they subscribe to my newsletter and I don't have to do a thing, right? I just keep publishing on the platform, on the platform, on the platform. And then maybe like some some publications will have like an awards um end of the year awards like best writer of 2020, best article on finance for 2020 or 2021, right? So um I might have a a shot at that and that gets more people um looking at my stuff because when they're voting some people will have to click on everything in that category to then go vote on it right and that might get me more subscribers right they click on my stuff they go oh i like this let me subscribe okay um yes and then with all these all these what do you call it all these publications i'm I'm getting new people to see my stuff and I'm I'm getting closer to finding the people that you know that like my stuff where I can just so maybe I start out with 10 publications and I do it at 10 different times and maybe two publications of those 10 I really got a lot of subscribers maybe instead of 10 subscribers I got 50 each time from both of them Well, then I'll stop with the other 10 and focus on those two. And I, I maybe have found my niche, right? Yeah. Okay. So to be honest, I don't know if hacker news has led to anything, but it's led to more domain authority. I can say that, but in terms of subscribers, which is my strategy for the syndication, um, yeah, I don't know if I've gotten more subscribers from hacker news. That's all I have to say about that. Okay. And then one thing that I might learn from all this syndication is that so every every publication has their own style of editing and I really want to learn some new editing techniques or a way to edit my content um, because it's one of my goals for the year. I just want to learn like, oh, how to, I want to learn to simplify my writing so much that it's solid, right? So I don't have to add other words. I can just, I can learn how to simplify my writing and like make it more concise so that more people will read my stuff, right? Not just click on it, but they'll read it because it's short and they'll see that, right? So I've been... I've been doing that. I noticed some words that uh, I use that I don't have to. Like, when I'm talking about something, like, um, when I'm talking about domains, and I'm saying that backlinks will increase my domain authority, right? I can say backlinks increase my domain authority. The more backlinks um, a website has, the more valuable um, it is. So I don't have to have it is. My writers know that more valuable, the domain is more valuable with more backlinks. So I don't need to have then whatever I just said. It is, right? I can just cut out the it is and people still understand what I'm saying. So I've been learning that. But yeah, I could learn more editing techniques okay so problems with this strategy so in my experience I've done this with two um, publications right and some publications will at first give you the backlinks um, and then they take them away that happened with um I don't want to name them but if you look at my my podcast workflow You'll see that I was posting it somewhere and that I stopped doing that. That's because they stopped giving me the backlinks, right? Okay. And then another problem 
is that some publications might only accept new content, right? So stuff that isn't previously, like I can't submit the movie theater blog post because it's not new content. They only want new stuff, right? Okay. And then another problem is that it might take a while before I find a publication that accepts my content, right? So um, it might take weeks to um, find a publication that wants my things, um, mostly because the submission process might take two to three weeks. Like I was looking at one um, publication and they said, we're taking a month before we can give you an answer whether we want this on the platform. So yeah, but there are hundreds of hundreds of publications that um, are willing to accept guest posts, right? So that's one thing. Um, yeah, another th problem is that they might edit my content too much, or they might change something. Like I noticed that Hacker Noon changed revenue ideas to Alex's revenue ideas. I don't like that, right? So, and then they also might just steal my content, like just post it as their own and not give me credit. I've noticed that, that some publications might do that. And then they also might change my title to make it more like sound like clickbait. Hacker Noon did this um, when they changed the airline article. They did this to the airline article. They changed it to like 10 mind-blowing ways um, an airline makes money. And it's like, no, nah, that's for clickbait, not SEO. Don't do that. But they did it anyways. And then they might not let me promote my websites. So they might not let me promote um, revenue research because it's like self-promotion and they don't want that. And also, it's like Instagram. Instagram doesn't want you to take people away from the platform. So they kind of... They use their algorithm to get that post that's promoting other things to, like, not get as many views. You know what I'm saying? So they might do that. Um, but, like, th let's say I put something like, oh, check out my newsletter at the bottom. In this case, they might be like, oh, we can't add that. Or when they're editing it, they might just not have that and then hit publish, right? So that's another thing. Okay, so what do I have to do next? So I have to sort through all these financial publications and then I have to submit to them. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shop around uh, NBA e NFTs first just because that's like, that's something relevant to right now in terms of like people are very interested in that. And then I can just start out with one publication and see if they accept it. And if they accept it, then I go to another one, right? So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I should start with just one. Because, like, like, Hacker Noon doesn't care if you double up on your publications, right? So maybe, I think I have to read the rules. I have to find one that does accept it, and then, well... Yeah, what I'll do is I'll find publications that just accept uh, re content that's already been published. I can't remember the word for that, but yeah. And if they accept my content, I'll just keep submitting it. I'll keep submitting my content. I'll submit old stuff. I'll submit. I'll submit everything and try to get all those backlinks. Um, if my content works well, I'll continue to work with them. If they give me a backlink, I'll continue to work with them. If they allow old content, then I'll work with them. As long as people read my stuff and it's not a hassle to work with them or work with that publication, I'll keep working for them, right? Or working with them. Um, yeah. So that's all I have for this episode. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day. Bye.